Hello my friend, thank you for being here and here I am with another tutorial and on this video we'll give you a basic idea how you can repair an uh, interior door panel. This is a 2003 Toyota 4Runner. In order to repair this door panel, you don't have to use the sewing machine. That means it is easier because on some door, uh, on some door, door panel, you have to use the sewing machine. And in order for you to repair, you have to have that skill using the sewing machine. But right here, I will give you an idea how you can do it by your own. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do it. I am uploading videos related to car interior so often. So, um, uh, it is easier, but you have to have like a certain tool. And you will see what kind of tool do I use. This is the door panel. This is a 2003 uh, Toyota 4Runner. Make sure to check everything. That's the reason why I'm going to repair uh, this door panel. I'm going to uh, change the top piece. That's the piece that I'm going to replace it. I'm just going to wrap it with the new material. Uh, this door panel, if you don't have an idea how to remove it, you might end up removing some pieces that is not necessary. So check, you only have two screws. Check everywhere. Uh, some screws are hiding behind plastic. And this, the screws are hiding behind plastic. And so another Toyota, uh, the screw might be visible. So you just pull that part. You see how it is? Pull it. It comes with two clicks. Simple as that. And you will see one screw in there. It's a fillet. Make sure to remove it. When you're done removing that one, there should be another screw in the top. It, like I say, you only come with two screws. There is a plastic. Remove that plastic. Behind that plastic is one more screw. It's black. It's that, was, that is the plastic. Don't break nothing. Make sure to remember where those plastic go. If you think you're not going to remember, if you're free to take photo, video, that way it will be easy for you to put it back. Now you just have to pull of this door panel pull it through you it comes with click see i just pull them on there that door panel is out just pull it up and that's it so now it had three connections in there the one for the light the bottom for the light let the customer know in case if it's something not working properly there are two cables in toyota for runner are white and green the white going on the top always and the green going on the bottom Make sure to disconnect it. That is easy to disconnect it. That's one. And you have to disconnect the other one. That is the second one. So I got two cables out and this door panel is out. So I'm going to take it to the table. I have right here on the table. In order for me to uh, repair that part, I have to separate the black piece from the top. I have to separate it. How do I separate it? It comes with a screw and it comes with some uh, like a kind of melted click. And first I will remove those screws and then I will show you how you can uh, remove or eliminate those are like a, a click. You have to remove all those screws. Our Phillips and you have to put those screws back. If you don't know how to do this, this might be hard for you, but don't worry. I'm giving you an idea how you can do it. You will need, if you know how a power tool, you see me using a screw gun. If you don't have this kind of tool, you can do everything by hand. Why do I use this kind of tool? Well, because this is my job. I do this every day. I do this since long time ago. Then faster I finish, better it is for me. So I got this part right here. This is the plastic. Just make sure how it is. Make sure to put it back. So I done removing the AC thin, that with those screws. Now you have to remove those clicks. How are you going to remove those clicks? You can use a sandpaper to sand it down, or you can do this. That is a disc, it's a three inch uh, wide, and I am trim a little bit. You see, I am cutting all around, because the, uh, doing this, it is easy. If you don't have that kind of disc, you can uh, use a sandpaper. There is a lot of different ways how you can remove those clicks. I'm going to uh, use a power tool to remove this, uh, uh, to sand it down those clicks. And I just move this thing away. And you can sand it like this. And you will be able to remove it by doing it like that. But it will take you for longer. But if you are doing this for hobby, it doesn't matter how long it will ta uh, take you. The most important thing is to finish right. So I got a power tool, I'm going to use a grinder. That is a heavy duty grinder, I'm going to use that one. 
So I just connect it to the power, uh, air and I sand it down easily. So that click is out. Same thing with the other one. And same thing with the other one. Like that you're going to sand all those clicks. Right here, you need this little disc. You see the space right there with the with the without cutting that disc, I wouldn't be able to uh, remove those parts. That's what I cut, especially for that part. So I steal that part glue on there. I just use a spatula. You will need like a spatula, flat the screwdriver. That part is out, and I have one more click right there. Look how easy this part is come up. You don't care fast it is. So easy like that. So that part is out. Those clicks are still in there so I can reuse it. Uh, you will see how I use it back. So I got the, uh, the door pen, uh, this part right here. So now I go, uh, you can do it on two ways. You can put a quarter of an inch on top phone. To be honest, I don't like to put phone on these pieces. First, I'm going to remove this little uh, gasket that is on there. It just comes with metal. You just have to open those metal a little bit, those like, just a spatula, use a screwdriver to remove it. Most of this kind of car come with uh, those kind of, it's like a metal tips in there, but some of them come with rivet. So that part is out. I'm going to remove this vinyl. A lot of people put the new material on top of the old vinyl. I don't like to do it that way. I like to remove the whole thing. And some people put a quarter of an inch headliner phone in there on top of the vinyl. I don't like to do it that way either. either. So I'm removing the old material. And this kind of car, Toyota, especially on Toyota, uh, Honda and Nissan, is the same process. Same. It comes almost the same. So I got that part out. You see it right there. What am I gonna do right now? I going to sand it a little bit, not that much. And here I am sanding that thing. I don't need to sand it that much, like I say. That metal I have to sand it because I'm going to put a lot of glue in there. Make sure to put a lot of glue because you don't want that part to unglue it later. Later. So uh, when you don't put a lot of glue and that part is exposed to the sun, the hot or the sun made that part unglue it. Come and undone and you don't want that to happen. So this vinyl, it doesn't stretch uh, four side, it only stretch uh, one side. So by, and this part, you don't need the vinyl to stretch that much. Then I start putting glue. If you don't have a glue pad, if you don't have a glue gun, you don't have a compressor, you can do all this by hand. You just buy the glue in a upholstery, uh, those places where they sell like upholstery supplies, and buy the brush and start putting uh, glue uh, with brush. See, I'm putting a lot of glue in there. And one thing right here, you have to let it dry at least, at least one minute and a half, at least. Right now, the temperature is right now almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you can, uh, it is hot, it is hot. And I'm going to let that glue dry for at least, at least minute and a half. Minute and a half to two minutes. If it, the weather was like cold, um, let's say it's 60, you have to use, uh, uh, let it dry for, I would say for uh, three minutes and then use a hot air. Even it is hot right now, but I will still use the hot air glue gun. You see that red thing on my on the left of your monitor? That is a heat gun, and I will use that one. So I put a lot of glue. When you let the material dry, if you put glue on there and you want to unglue it, you can do it. You can unglue it without a problem. Look at right there. I just put glue in there and I'm going to unglue. You see how easy it is? because the material, the glue is dry, see? If, it dumb, if I don't let that material dry enough, and I, if I drop it in there and I try to unglue it, I can't. 
it will be hard for me to unglue it. So, but on top of that one, I will use the hot air to make sure that glue is thick and strong in there. And you can use a spatula, you can use a, a spoon, you can use a, a fork to do this. I will use this uh, kind of tool that I have, it's a bone. It comes with a BMW C3. And this is easy. I always use this kind of tool for this. But in case if you don't have it, uh, you can use, like I say, a spoon or a fork or um, a spatula that make sure to that part you don't want to be sharp because if it is sharp, you might end up cutting the vinyl and you don't want to cut the vinyl. So that part is there, just making sure to uh, glue it on there. And you have to do the same thing. Same thing, my friend. See, I cannot glue that part without problem because the glue has been dry, but I will put a hot air later on. Why do I put a hot air? Because I want that part. Um, by by me putting a hot air, uh, the hot air will uh, warm the glue and will make the glue stick strong in there. When that part is exposed to the sun, um, it will stay glue on. It's not going to, uh, it's not going to come in undone. If it is cold and you don't stretch the material and you don't put like a hot air, soon as that part exposed to the sun, exposed to the hot temperature, it will unglue, it will undone. And you don't want that to happen. Believe me, you don't want that to happen. This can be fabric, this can be leather. If you are making this out of leather, make sure to the uh, um, use a a thin leather. See, I am pulling there. Make sure you don't want to see any mark, any scratch on that piece, any bubble, air bubble. You don't want to see it. So make sure to use the palm of your hand, rough, nice. If you see like a bubble air in there, you have to unglue it and you have to remove it. Why? Because uh, that little bubble in there might be uh, um, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So try to eliminate it. How? Ungluing that part. And you don't want to see any ring come on here. So right here, I will use the hot air. This kind of vinyl is heavy, heavy duty vinyl, but it's uh, the texture is like, uh, like the original. So I got that part. And now we're going to glue this part in there. It, the glue has been there for a long time, so right now it's not gonna work. I have to put more glue in there. And right now it's gonna work. And I start gluing the top part of that piece. When you pull, pull it even. Even it is with glue in there, but if you don't pull it even, uh, might see like a some uh, bump some way or in there and you don't want to see that you don't want to see that. no matter if it is for you or for your neighbor you are working for a customer uh, try to do it the uh, nice try to work uh, the right ways now I just cutting the excess material in there see I am trimming I don't want material extra in there it is not necessary So I got the top part of that panel already. So now I'm going to um, start trimming a little bit this part, part right here. Don't cut it too short. If you have to cut it, don't cut it too short. Go a little by little. Uh, if you cut it too short, you wanna like uh, uh, fix it. It won't be it will be impossible uh, for you to fix it. But if you cut it longer and you have to trim a little bit, that's the way it should be. A little by little trimming. So right here I'm cutting even to this uh, board because I don't need an extra material in there. So I got this part almost done. I just have to do the side. And right here I will need a hot, uh, 
hot air in there, I need to warm this material a little bit. I need to force this vinyl a little bit. Force it. It had glue already. But look at the shape of that part. That's why I'm putting hot air. I need to force it. I need to make a stretch in there. And there I have it. Trim a little on the corner and put a hot air. When you are working on the um, on on let, let's say a door panel, a lot of door panel are plain. You don't have to use a hot air. But I on this one it is kind of plain, but on the side has like a that special shape. I recommend you to use a hot air if you don't have a hot uh, 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 heater gun. Uh, if it is just uh, sun in there, go take that piece and work under the sun. That way the vinyl can warm and will be easy for you to do it. That's one way. But if you don't have like a, this kind of tool, you can use a hair dryer. With hair dryer, you uh, work too. So I'm warming that piece because I need to remove some wrinkle. I need to force it because if I don't put a hot air, uh, I might show the wrinkle uh, from outside and I don't want to see the wrinkle from outside. And you can see the outside is plain. All the wrinkles are under there and that's fine. That's fine. So now I'm just trimming a little bit right here. And I almost had this piece done, my friend. Like I say, you don't have to, you don't need like a skill about using the sewing machine. And there it is, there is that piston. So I have to drill some hole in there and I will show you how you can do it. You can, you have to make those holes and you have to make it uh, bigger. So first I'm going to put this piece, uh, just look how it is. I am making the hole in there. Make, make sure to make the hole. You can make the hole with that metal at the same time. But it is better if you make the hole first. Like I am doing right now. I, I see the hole. Then I use a, a, a tiny flat screwdriver. And this is the last hole. And there is that piece. So now I'm going to put this gasket in there. It's easy, it's mature, and you can squeeze that metal by hand. You can use a plier, and this you can squeeze it by hand. See, I just get him and simple as that. So that piece is on there. And you can see him on there. So next I have to drill those holes. You can use a screwdriver. I am using the screw gun with the Philip tips in there. You can use a punch hole. Right there. That's all what I need. But that side is not big enough. So I'm going to use a drill. And you will see it later. See, I'm just making sure to find those holes. Um, all those holes, make sure to drill. So I got the hole in there. Now I'm going to use a uni bit. You can make the hole with this, a raisin blaze, and there is the hole. That will work fine. You can make it like that in case if you don't have a uni bit. I will use a uni bit because it is easier for me. I just put them right here. And look, easy. And the job comes down like a more professional. There are those holes. I'm going to do all those holes. This is the uni bit. See, it's half inch. And look at that. Tool for, uh, for, uh, for example, for me, it is so important. So important. But if you are doing this for hobby, you can use a, a raising blade, just cut a hole and
and I'm making those holes so easy with this tool. So I got those holes already. Now it is time to put the uh, assembling that piece. One thing right here, I have a half inch screwdriver, a screw with watcher. You see those screwdriver? Those screwdriver are number six. Number six, half inch. Half inch is too long. If I use those half inch screw, we'll go through, uh, through that door panel and you will see it, able to see it from outside. You don't want to see it from outside, believe me. Don't, you have to cut it before you use it. But it has some screw on the bottom and it have a click on the top. Right now, it will be all click. I mean, all screw because I cut those click. I just regulated the power of this because I don't want to uh, ruin it that those uh, screw in there. So I just put one screw. And right now I am using the same screw that it comes with it. Same screw. I put the second one in there. There is nothing new. Same thing like how it was. And those screws come with washers, so make sure to put the washer in there too, because if you only put the screw, uh, the hole is too big. And I, I, I didn't uh, drill the hole. So this metal go right there, just make sure to put it how it was. And that is right there. Go with two screw, three screw. On this one, go with the screw and some go with click. So that part is done in there. I had, just have to keep uh, putting the rest of the screw. So now I'm going to uh, put some other screw. You see half inch, I cut one A. And I'm going to put this screw right here. Right there when I am putting those screw were black click, melted click. So but I cut those clicks, so I replacing those click with this uh, kind of screw. Simple. And it is easy and will hold that part is strong. There is another way how you can hold that panel in there. Another way. Without a screw. And I got that screw right there. So I'm going to keep doing the same thing with the rest. Cutting a little bit. That is a half inch uh, chrome screw. It's number six. The standard screw for the uh, for those one are number eight, but I am using a thin one because the other one is too thick. And you can see them on there. Those one are the new one. That one is old. That one is new one. There were a black click. See right here, a new one, there was a black click in there, and there was the old one, that click was right there, the bottom click was right there. So I'm going to put two screws right here, and you will see it, that one and that one. I drill a hole on the center of that click with the number six drill bit. Don't use the number eight drill bit. If you use a number eight drill bit, you have to use a number eight. Um, if you use a one eight drill bit, you have to use a, a number eight a screw. So keep that in mind. So I got that screw in there. That screw is not going through the door panel. Everything is under control. If I don't cut it, if I didn't cut it, you will be able to see that screw from outside. And that will be bad for you.
that would be bad because you have to replace it, you have to fix it. So, and that is the second screw in there. Easy, huh? So easy. And this door panel is done. I just have to clean it and I just have to put it back. And you can see him on there, my friend. You can see him on there. I am using a soft or uh, heavy duty. I said the greaser. Sometimes you cannot use this degreaser on some leather and on some vinyl because um, it will make the material fade out and you don't want that. So there is. I replaced that black material in there and it looks nice. It is new. Now it is time to put it back. And just make sure to connect everything and put them on the top first, then uh, push, push it down, then uh, put those click in there. And those click are in, so now you just have to put the two screw. One screw is in, the other one is in, now you just have to put this plastic in there to hire that screw. And same thing right here. So this door panel, it is done, my friend. I just make it sure lock. I have to make sure to uh, roll that window down. It is not working. Let me see why it's not working. Oh, it is locked those windows. That's what it is not working, but let's see it now. So it really down. So it is working. That's the way it should be, and lock and unlock. So, perfect. So, this door panel is working good. Uh, you saw the whole process. You saw me repairing that part. Like I said, you don't need to have like a experience for doing that. No, you just have to have the, a tool, and then the, I am giving you an idea how you can do it by your own. So, thank you, my friend, for watching this video. Remember, the purpose of this channel it is not to look for uh, work, it is not to look for employees, it is just to give you an idea how you can make your own project, your own car interior, uh, your own door panel, uh, repair your own door panel like on this video. That's all the purpose of this channel. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. If that was the case, don't forget to hit the like button, my friend. Thank you. See you in the next video.